This isn't a strategy video. It's a year-end audit. Instead of doing a narrative recap of 2025, I wanted to see what the main traded assets actually rewarded when you applied very simple mechanical trading rules. I took two of the most common ideas, momentum and buy the dip, and ran them with identical parameters and costs across equities and crypto over the same 12 months. The interesting part isn't which strategy won, it's how differently the same logic behaved depending on what you traded and what that says about the structure of those markets in 2025. Let me be precise about the rules because the details matter. Momentum is long only. If the price is higher than it was 60 days ago, I am long. Simple as that. If it's lower, I'm flat. No shorting. Mean reversion is also very simple. If the asset drops more than 2% in a single day, I buy the next day and hold for one day. Every time the position changes, I charge 5 basis points. No optimization, same parameters everywhere. As we go through the assets in this table, don't think best strategy ever. Rather think what kind of price behavior does this asset actually have, referring to the year 2025. Starting with the S&P 500, SPY. Buy and hold returned about 19% in 2025. And I want you to take a second and internalize that how actually crazy that is. An equity index was rising by about 20% over one year. One of the biggest equity indices. Momentum in comparison ended up almost identical in return, but with much smaller drawdown. About 5% as you see here, instead of nearly 19%. Mean reversion, interestingly, lost money. You see minus 1%. That tells you something important. Short-term drawdowns in the S&P 500 often continue instead of snapping back the next day. So a one-day dip buying rule gets run over while momentum mostly just filters the downside. Triple Q or QQQ or the NASDAQ looks very similar, but obviously you have a slightly higher beta. So buy and hold, we got 22% and once again, internalize that 22% over a single year. That's absolutely phenomenal. That's crazy. That's insane. Momentum helped with drawdowns again. You see minus 10% max versus 23%-ish. But it didn't really improve the return here. And re mean reversion was basically flat. This is a market where drift dominates. Being invested beats being active. Trading mostly adds friction, at least referring to 2025, which is, at least for me, a very interesting insight. Now, Let's move on to the crypto assets, starting with Ethereum, probably the most interesting case in this analysis. Buy and hold lost money with massive drawdowns of 60%. If you hold Ethereum or trade it, you know that. Mean reversion, on the other hand, worked. Roughly 20% profit, but the shooting star here is actually momentum. Momentum completely dominated, returning over 60%. I did a video on uh, Ethereum strategy roughly one or two months ago. Be invited to check that out. I tested it once again over the last weeks and the pattern is still persistent. So definitely something to take a look at. But over 2025, we saw this insane momentum return 
for Ethereum here. Both active strategies reduce drawdowns dramatically, as you see. So momentum, we got minus 24-ish percent. Same for mean reversion versus 60%. And yet the difference is that Ethereum trends persisted, obviously. When ETH moved, ETH, sorry, moved, it kept going and momentum captured that far better than just buying the dips. Last but not least, Bitcoin, completely different environment, maybe slightly similar to Ethereum, but with some differences. I've referred to that also in the Ethereum strategy. I will link the video below, by the way. But anyhow, buy and hold, as you know, lost money, roughly 7% over 2025. And we got also a massive drawdown, not as massive as for ETH, but still 30%, that is quite some hit. Momentum, interestingly, again, helped. It turned negative returns into positive ones, as you see. But mean reversion here is the shooting star working best. Around 16% return with the smallest drawdown of all three strategies. Tells you Bitcoin in 2025 had sharp sell-offs that snap back quickly, but trends that didn't persist cleanly. That is exactly the environment mean reversion needs. So here's the pat pattern straight from the data. Momentum works when direction persists. Obviously, that's the idea of the strategy. Mean reversion works when drawdowns are sharp, but temporary. In smooth equity indices, buy and hold already captures most of the return. That's consistent with academics, with institutional investing, and in general, where all people put their money on, that is index funds, because they know they are not perfect, but close to perfect. Strategies, so meaning momentum and mean reversion, didn't fail randomly. They succeeded or failed depending on whether the asset's price path matched their assumptions. So the key takeaway is to not trade momentum or just buy the dip. It's to understand what kind of behavior an asset actually has. And only then decide whether a strategy even fits. Same rules, different assets, predictable outcomes. If you want to replicate this, the code is in the members drive. And I'm obviously curious which asset or trading strategy surprised you the most this year. Let me know below. And for those celebrating Merry Christmas. Cheers. Bye-bye.